just got back from the Toyota dealership. They had it in stock. So, that's a good sign, right? Made in China. Come on, Toyota. Charge an arm and a leg. This is $400 right here. Made in China. There it... I have no words. Hopefully this thing works and lasts another 10 years. It's made of gold, apparently. Just like those uh, VVT phasers that fail on the Camrys. There it is. Too bad this is going to be swimming in salt very soon. And, uh, I don't know, is that a vent? Let's plug it in, look at the fuel pressure. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. New module is plugged in. We're fixed. Yes. <laughs> here we go. 66% duty cycle. We're at 45. So let's clear out all the codes and figure out a way to secure this thing to the fuel, to the rail because the bolt snapped off and the bracket's all rusty and stuff. But that's it. So $400 call was correct. And it kind of makes sense. That's the part that is exposed to severe, um, you know, <laughs> weather and elements. So, too bad the owner uh, let the other shop put a fuel pump in it. That was two grand down the drain. Uh, this repair is, you know, under a grand with parts and labor and diagnostics and everything. So, that's it. Let's clear the codes, take it for a test drive. Make sure it's perfect. So even after clearing codes, look at those long-term trims. So, if we start the car up right now, it's going to be super rich. Look at the Lambda. It's going to follow the plugs out. So what we need to do, it's correcting, correcting, minus 20. It can't, it can't reset on its own can't do it okay so we need to go back into Toyota and do like a memory reset you can probably also disconnect the battery in a pinch but since we have the scanner here let's go back into the ECM and do a memory clear reset okay so in the Toyota ECM menu and special functions we want to Reset memory. Well, is that is that what we want to do? That's for transmission. Oil reset, customize, actuation test. No, I think I think we'll do the the memory reset here. We'll see if that resets the fuel trims. Before following for ignition, switch off and back on. Okay. Now let's go back to OBD2. Make sure the fuel trims are where they should be. And you gotta love the speed of the scanner. Live data. Long term trims, short term trims. Dang, there's still 45%. Might have to disconnect the battery. This is old school. <laughs> have to disconnect the battery to reset the, the memory. I'm sure you could pull a fuse, but you know, this is quicker. All right, now let's see what the fuel trims are. Oh, 
Well, it's amazing the clock didn't reset. Yes, success. So let's graph this, fire it up. And once the uh, O2 sensors come online, we should see the short term starting to correct. There we go. 2%. Perfect. Oh, yeah. It's happy. Beautiful. All right, let's finalize this, take it for a test drive, and ship it. Okay, so I zip tied the module to a different location uh, right on this fuel filler um, neck metal line. You know, it's nice and secure there. Instead of this area, this spot seems to be really much prone to rust. It's maybe the wheel sprays more on there. But this spot looks nice and clean, so we're going to keep the module there. Let's uh, do the same experiment, see how much current is uh, this thing puts out to the fuel pump at the different uh, percent duty commands. And uh, that way we'll have a known good, so next time the diagnosis will be even faster. Okay, so I have this picoscope set up. We have a green, clean bill of health. Let's jump into our bi-directional control. And here, if we remember, at 25% we had 0 PSI and 0 amps. At 53% we had 8 PSI, 66% we have 25, and 80% we had 42. So we'll do actuation test. <clears throat> Let's do the fuel pump duty command. And we'll roll the scope. Should be zero right now. And we'll just monitor the uh, fuel pump duty. Okay, so 25%. Ha! Huh, it does put out about 3 amps at 25%. So I'm going to write here new 3 amps and what's our fuel pressure? About 34 psi instead of 0. Okay? 3 amps and 34 psi Okay, now let's do the 80%. You can hear it's uh, it's kind of maxing out. We're at six, about six amps. Our fuel pump is 47 because the uh, you know, pressure regulator is open. So we'll go a bit, come back out of here. Now let's uh, let's run the truck and see what it does at 53% and 66%. All right, let's fire it up. So it's at 90. Now we're at 66, and at 66% duty, we're at about six amps. So new I'm sure the pressure is good. 46 psi. 46 psi and 6 amps. So that, that's a big improvement, that's a big improvement, and once it drops to 53, once it warms up, we'll just do a final measurement there. Alright, a few seconds later it just switched to 53%, and at 53% we're down to, oh, about 5 amps. So we'll write new. And what's the pressure? Rock steady 45 psi. Five amps.
So huge difference. Before 53% we were at 8 PSI, now we're at 45 and went up from 1.5 amps to 5 amps. So that's a fix. We'll save that. And for bonus footage, I want to tear this old module apart, see if there's any corrosion in there or what the heck happened inside. So before taking this thing on final test drive, let's do a quick fluids check. Engine oil. Looks clean, looks fine. However, the coolant I noticed was empty here. Open the radiator cap, there's nothing in here. Come on people, basic maintenance. All right, let's see how much this thing, how thirsty the Sequoia is. We'll let that bubble until it's full. Then we'll fill this up. It's probably coolant hasn't been checked in since it was 2012. It's very easy to do and you don't want to overheat this fancy aluminum engine. Look, it's still drinking. Oh my word. It's almost half a gallon low. Where's it going? Are you done? Okay, I think it's done. Sweet! The big Sequoia is very happy now. Fuel trims are right around 0%. So that's it. Um, not too hard of a diagnosis, the fuel pressure related, that was the first thing we checked based on the data. And, well, why was the fuel pressure low? Fuel pump control modules, it didn't fail completely, the fuel pump still ran, but only at half of the amperage that it was supposed to. So, turned out to be the uh, little magic box under the truck that controls the fuel pump. Still a lot cheaper than replacing the fuel pump, so unfortunately the owner um, you know, wasted that $2,000. If you were the customer, would you go back to the first shop and demand your money back because they were dead wrong on calling this fuel pump? Okay, I mean, they might say, hey, you signed the agreement that you're authorizing this work, blah, 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 you know, but that's just not, not ethical. If you're wrong, you know, why, why are you charging the customer for doing something that's not necessary? If you're the customer, would you be insistent on getting at least half the refund, you know? I would be. I'd be pretty upset about that. So, that's it for, uh, for bonus footage. Let's tear apart that uh, old module. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Man, this thing's a pig. 15 miles per gallon. 10 mile easy cruise loop. Uh, you gotta pay to play, I guess. Alright, time for bonus footage. Let's tear this silly fuel pump control module apart. It's probably glued together, but I think we can somehow. There we go. Oh yeah. See the green crusties already. I saw a little green over there. How did moisture get in here? Looks sealed, but Can we pry the board out of here. Is that glued to the? Uh... There we go. 
Let's see what's hiding. This thing. Oh, oops. See the green crusties right there. Yeah, there's a little um, moisture intrusion. Maybe through through somewhere. I don't know if I want to desolder this. There we go. Oh yeah. Carnage. So surprising that it worked at all. Looks like water might have gotten in right there where that this uh, rust just jacked the uh, the plastic in half. I think that's what happened. That's it. We're done. <laughs> that was pretty neat.